Hi guys, we absolutely- Wait, I hadn't sat down yet. <laughs> Welcome to the Housing Life. We absolutely love to hear your comments and your questions that you leave us on the Housing Life channel and on our other social media channels. And a lot of those questions involve family and faith. And of course, we obviously are a family of faith. So we wanna answer some of those questions. <laughs> So we definitely found our faith individually. I discovered my faith or found my faith, thank God, when I was eight. My mom used to sing at uh, this church called, um, oh God, I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot the name of the, uh, I forgot the name of the church, but it, it was, was a church. church. <laughs> <laughs> it was a church in City of Refuge. Bam, I Bam. remembered it. Where at? Uh, in Hawaii. I used to just watch her, all the other singers, and we would go to church every Sunday. I was really intrigued, and I was eight. My mom didn't force me, no one did. At eight years old, when the pastor says, does, does anybody you know, wanna know Jesus Christ as their uh, Lord or personal you know, savior, just come on up and say this prayer? I remember feeling like, this is what I need to do. This is what I have to do. This is what I want to do. I want to know God more. So I remember just shooting my hand up, not being afraid and uh, walking down the, down, you know, the, yeah. the aisle and uh, becoming saved. And that night I remember talking to God and feeling this intense like joy and um, just happiness to get to, to know, to know God more. And that's when I started reading the Bible. Uh, again, at a, at a very young age, we went to Sunday school and we had amazing Sunday school teachers. So that is how I found my faith. That's actually a really cool story. You've told it to me before, so yes. I, like to hear, I always like to hear it. Aww. Mine is mine's kind of all over the place, candidly. I've been to- Like you. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I've been to Bible school, I went to Bible school. I went to Sunday school. Um, I went to Catholic churches because half my family's, a bunch of my family's Catholic. I kind of went all over and I, it made me come to the conclusion that you know, obviously faith is a very personal decision and it's a personal relationship that you have no matter what you believe in. We, I happen to believe in God uh, and Jesus. And so for me, um, you know, I remember my, my faith has obviously evolved over time because of that. Um, I went to church with my grandma. She was, uh, we used to go to the First Baptist Church in Sonoma. And I used to remember going with her when I'd stay with her on the weekends. Her and my grandpa would go. And then when I went, I went to Pepperdine, which is a faith, faith school. So did I. Yes, imagine that. And uh, the other one too was baseball, believe it or not. We had a, a, a vital study group when I played minor league baseball and there was some really just fantastic um, things that I learned in there about myself and also about my faith. And then the final one was being in news, believe it or not. Um, there was a couple of pastors I met that were military or, or law enforcement. And just to see how they handled uh, you know, some difficult situations was just gave me a lot of strength. And of course, then I met you. We actually, helped each other with our faith. I think that's the importance of finding a partner if faith is very important to you. I remember when we first got together, I mean, I had a very extensive, like, like knowledge of the Bible, of quotes and- um, I don't. Exactly, but <laughs> I lacked the faith that you you actually had and have. So I, I I learned a lot about myself. And that's the thing about your your own personal journey with God. There are some some years you're like, I got this. There are other years you mm -hmm. may, you know, get a little lost. And I remember when I met you, my faith was kind of um, weak. Whereas Adam, he didn't really have like all the knowledge that I did, but his faith was so strong. And I was like, wow, that is so admirable. That is so inspirational. We help each other. So when there's Absolutely. a time where, where my faith is lacking, he will literally be like, do you believe in God? <laughs> uh, did, you, did you read your word? Do you believe? what the word of God, you know, says to Mary, you can't just read it. You have to believe it. You have to walk in it and you have to, um, feel, it. You have to feel it. That is how I believed our, 
our personal faith and our journeys have actually helped yep. each other as a couple. And I think it's be accepting too. I think we're very accepting of everybody and their own faith and their own belief. You know, we have our path and, and that doesn't mean that you judge anybody else's path. Our pastor, actually, we went to premarital counseling and he said something that was very interesting and I'm more of a visual learner and I remember him drawing a triangle and he was saying at the top of the triangle is God and you and Adam are on the the, mm -hmm. the other on each side of, of the triangle and it's all you know connected, connected. Um, but you have to remember who who is at the top if you continue to keep your eyes focused on God meaning if we're going through difficulties and we may not have the the answers. We will literally look at each other and say, okay, what, what does God think about this? Is there somewhere in the Bible that can actually help us mm -hmm. with what we are going through right now? And oftentimes, Adam will say, all right, let's just stop, think, and let's pray. We actually ended up going to the, we found a church together. I, I grew up non-denominational. And see, I grew up actually Pentecostal. So I was non-denominational. I went to Catholic church. I went to yeah. Episcopalian church. I went to First Baptist church. I went to. Whereas we went to Pentecostal, Pentecostal. <laughs> People Pentecostal. who are Pentecostal know what I'm talking about. Uh, but as I got older, once I went to college, once I traveled the world, uh, it's actually, if we're gonna get real here, it was actually one of the hardest transitions that I made within my faith, being brought up into a certain sector, if you wanna call it that way, denomination, and then getting older, being like, hmm, this isn't, this isn't really who I am. This is, this is maybe what, my, you know, my mom or their yeah. family. Everybody you know. has their own path. Yes. And I remember reading um, a verse in the Bible where it says, worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't feel like Pentecostal was my truth. So I actually became non-denominational. Non mm -hmm. I believe in the Holy Bible, Christianity as you know as, as as a whole if you're Catholic cool if you're I if you're Baptist what whatever so but to me I'm non-denominational yep. and so when we actually got together we found a church we actually went to a couple of churches we tried several of them and then we found one that we loved in LA and then we have one up here as well in Northern California so we have one in both places and we love the pastors at both places they're very similar churches very similar messages, very similar vibes, very similar energies. Funny thing, do you, you want to tell them a story about how we ended up back together because of church, kind of? It's actually a really sweet story. We had, if you watched our Adam on, and Tamara's love story. There's so it's on two. here. We had broken up. I show up at church. I'm late, as usual. That never happens. <laughs> the usher tells me, I think there's one seat left. There was one seat. Guess who? was sitting next to the one seat. This guy. I think it was our, I think it was, it was divine. Fate. It was fate. Yes. The rest is history. There you go. So thank you, God. Yes. <laughs> you didn't think it was gonna be funny, did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh. how we nurture our faith. That's a tough one. I, I'm in the process of doing that because hey I, we gotta be real here. But I think you're more verbal with it in the sense that you are you 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 nurture your faith maybe I'm wrong. Let's with see. Getting in the Bible and reading. Yes I, I do. I think I nurture my faith more with action. Like with being uh helping, doing not that one's wrong or right. I think you need mix of both, but for some reason I just the way I feel maybe I'm wrong. Think of a doctor, mm -hmm. right? Like they're always learning new things, going to seminars. Yep. That's the only way you're gonna stay up yeah. on, you know, or, or be in the know. For me, I think it's really important to read devotionals, uh, you know, watch sermons, go to church and uh, read, read your word. But the most important thing is prayer. I think a lot of the times yes. people, people forget that. It's very easy to do. And that's why I say I'm in the process of it because life gets in the way. 
everyone gets so busy, but it's the same thing like with a, with a best friend relationship. If you don't put the work in, if you don't put the time in, that's when you grow apart. So I've been very busy, but at the same time I'm learning, okay, Tamara, you have to set time. You have to show God that, 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 that God is important to you, that your, your relationship with God is important to you. And now with technology, I have this really cool devotional that texts me every day at 9 a.m. And you always know how I'm always on my phone. So there's no excuse. I literally, bing, it pops up, you read it, process it, manifest it. Most importantly, as Adam is saying, you've got to put it into action. If you don't put into action what you're actually learning, you'll never truly see the benefit of it. If you live in kindness, you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get mad, sure, but in, in your heart, if you have kindness, that is one way of nurturing your, your faith, is by by living it. So for a lot of it, I, I agree with Tamara what you're saying, and I also think you add to that bit by just carrying it with you. So you know, as you're driving along, if, if, if something comes to your mind and you want to talk to God or whatever you believe in that time, do it, it's okay. It doesn't mean you have to actually you know, go to a prayer room, sit down and get on your, I mean, that's great too. But if you're driving in the car and that and that's the time you think of it, it, it's okay. I think part of it is just living it 24 hours a day. <laughs> Can I tell the story? Yes. Okay, so we pray with our children. <laughs> Generally what happens is Ariah and Aiden will want to go but down at the same time. And so we will, a lot of times they'll be in the same bed. They'll be in Ariah's bed or Aiden's bed. So I'll be laying between them. And, and when we say uh, our, our night, night prayer, uh, it's always like, and now I lay me down to sleep. But at the end, you know, uh, Aiden always says, you know, uh, if I don't for it, we can pray, Lord, my soul will take. Amen. And then Ray Ray always stops it. No, Aiden. In Jesus', Jesus name, name, amen. amen. <laughs> now you know who's usually with Aiden when he goes to sleep and who's usually with Araya. But this is what I've learned. You have to be a, an example. Mm -hmm. You can't just throw things down their throat. You need to do this. Da -da 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 -da, and then they see you doing something else. And we're not perfect. No one's perfect. No. I'm just saying uh, consciously that is what I am trying to do. Lead by example. Because they hear everything. everything. Just this morning, Araya said. She said a word? Yes, she did. She did. And then Daddy said, where did you hear that? No, she said. <laughs> She said, I heard it from you, Daddy. I heard that. You thought I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs>
all the way down to my faith is from her. And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she died two days later and she said, I want you to carry on the legacy. Carry on the legacy of faith, of, of you know, God's work. I had a lot of things that, you know, were rough, um, and but nothing, and they all pale in comparison to dealing with what um, we dealt with with Elena. You know, I just feel like she's still with us, and I, and I and a lot of signs that I've seen and felt, and my, and my family has. Uh, we, you know, we don't know what's out there. We don't know, we, we have, that's what faith is. We have a belief of what's out there, and, and you have to have the faith in knowing that something else is, is out there for you when you're done on earth. But what I believe in, I believe there's more. And, um, you know, we don't know what that entails until we get there. For Elena, obviously it hurts every single day, some days more than others, but I also see so many amazing things that have happened. Um, we call it her voice, and we know her voice is still very strong. And the faith lets us, you know, just know that and, and also know just like in little things that happen over time uh, that remind us that she's here. We'd love to hear what you guys think about some of these topics as well. Yeah. We loved talking about our faith. I hope you guys enjoyed it and just as much as we did. Don't, uh, let me do no, it. I, my turn. Let, let me my do turn. it. Let me do it. Don't how forget. About we, how about we do it together? Ready? Ready? One, two, two, three. Don't, don't forget, forget to subscribe to, to The, the Housely Life. Life.